Welcome back guys for another hopefully action-packed day of Dom's fishing adventures. I'm in very close to shore because it is a it is windy and choppy, but I had to go fishing. And it's one of the first times I actually wear a bloody jumper this year, so that's a good sign for the squid, and that's what I'm going for. So I wish me luck and uh, well, hopefully we'll see you when I get a few fine specimens. Let's get into it. Awesome hookup. Look about the camera angle. I just want to get him. He's fighting too. So I don't want to lose him because I've had so much better. He's just on too. I have to get the net. Oh my god. Okay. That's a strange hookup. That is a strange hookup, but it's a hookup. And he's uh He's a good little fish, a good little calamari, right on here. So he must have tried to grab on it, grabbed onto it, and he um he got stuck, he got snagged. I'm content. Ten minutes, first calamari. He's a tiny tot, it's not gonna win any prizes, but he's won my heart. Yeah, beauty. And we are pretty shallow water. I thought I'd try the shallows first and I'd go a bit more further out. It doesn't get that deeper, but just wanted to try it at my uh, old spots. What I like doing is having two, two rods, giving a hand line. One I'm working, rotate it every now and then, and keep it pretty loose because some of this, well, because some of this squid they they can grab it, and if the drag is too tight, it just rips off the um, rips off the barbs, and you lose a good catch. So loose is the way to go. A hand line here too. We're actually moving in a southerly direction, which is not what I wanted. More east would have been great. So I was working this jig again. It's very hard to get on camera because I just waste so much battery. And uh, it's another one. It's a small one, but uh, calamari is calamari. Again, I got him right on the back of their head. How about that? Right on the back of the head. So, which is good because that's the strongest part of the calamari. That's where you want to catch them so they don't rip off the tentacles. So, this is a good bait size. It's also a good tucker size. Right, so I just moved the boat down at about 100 metres offshore. That wind will bring me over the weed beds. Try it again. The water, it's pretty hard to tell in the morning. You can't really see down, but it is dark and there's a bit of surface weed. It's patchy just down there, oh yeah. Uh, and you want weed, you don't really don't want reef. There might be some rocks around here, but hopefully I can drift over a good spot. It's only four meters. Kept moving the jigs. Out of those two squid I caught, I was just doing this basically, trying to gather the slack. You can feel the weight of the jig, and you just give it a, a few sort of jerks. Could be one. Yeah, it's definitely one. It could be one. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good one too. Fine specimen on that one. Yeah, beauty. Fine specimen. Woo! Awesome. Was getting a little bit quiet. I was getting worried again. But just uh, keep flicking it. And I was mucking around with that rod. And I saw the weight, just the tip, just sort of like buckle over a bit. That's the way to go. And it looks like that yellow lime color is working well. 
this one here, my favourite jig, hasn't really been hit yet. Whether I should change over to the same colour, I probably should do that, but I don't know. So that's the kind of jig I'm using, Harimitsu. It's a three and a half deep, it's about 23 grams. It's probably on the very heavy side in these kind of waters. It's only looking about four meters. The reason I like using them, because it is, there is a bit of a breeze, so it gets down there, you don't have to turn, pull out too much line. I mean, you always get to feel the, the jig at the end of your line. I just hope I get into a, a honey hole. Yes, it doesn't take long before you hit the bottom. I just had to move the boat because I just don't like having my lines all towards the end. I like them to be sort of uh, perpendicular to the to the uh, edge of the boat. And again, it's the wind. <laughs> wind in the current, I reckon. Yeah, so now I've turned again. Oh, what the hell's going on? Oh, right. That's what I like to see. That's what I like to see. And I moved the spot, I went further out. And he's a medium sized one. Oh, he's coming up. Hopefully, he's got a few followers with him. Oh, that snagged. That snagged on the bottom. Whoa there you go, beautiful fine specimen on that one. Whoa, too easy. Alright. I better tend to this one. This one's really stuck. Hope I don't lose the jig. I've got plenty of jigs, but then you gotta cut oh no. He's off. Beauty. He does pay to have a strong leader. I think I use um 20 or 30 pound leader because you don't want to lose jigs They're expensive and it's grabbed onto that weed bed that's what you want that ribbon weed as you can see the fine specimens on board and I uh, rudely interrupted his sleep I think then again he's probably going for some brekkie awesome here he is right here another one and they're actually loving this yellow jig Yellow lime jig, beautiful. I should put a white jig on that one. See if that might go for white. So I'm just on the edge of uh, of weed and sand, and you can see it. That's a really good spot for squid. As you can see the bottom of the water, because I can hang around the edges and I go for a prey. Could be some whiting out here. That's why I'm using these yellow lime white jigs. That's a size four, so hopefully that's gonna work. A bit more heavier. Yeah, so I'm right on the edge. You don't wanna go over the sand too much. Oh, here we go. It worked. Oh, I just realized it's hooked. Oh, it's a big, black cloud of, of ink out there, so that worked. Just right here. Thank you, sir. Beautiful. So that worked. How about that? Right on cue. Right on the edge. Bada bing. Woo! <laughs> Yuck. They're really good. I'm happy today. I'm absolutely content. Yeah, so it's patchy ground. It's actually be good for King George whiting too. Might give it a shot, but always there's butterfish there, so I'm not gonna be too fast. I'm just gonna work this jig crazy. It's a slower action one, size four. Yeah, now it's a real dark spot right here. Bit of sand there at the edge. I can just feel another hookup coming up pretty soon. Right, so it's getting warm. Took the jumper off. Now I've got the fine specimen out here. Hopefully the squid don't get jealous. I said, gee, I, I want to be on Dom's shirt. <laughs> I doubt it.
Oh, here we go. No, it could have been weed. Because I'm using a really heavy jig, this one here, and the hand line. Yeah, it's weed. Probably too heavy. Right, so we're on the move again. Probably about five and a half, six metres, which is why I prefer that kind of depth. Overcast, so you really can't see if it's weed or not, but you, you have the instinct that you're over weed. And also the sounder helps you out a bit. But I'm trying to get broken bottom on the edge of the sandbank and the weed beds. Oh, <laughs> hit the brakes. Yeah, so I've got sand here. Just over there, it actually drops down. So this is four meters, and then it goes down. I reckon this should be a good spot. Quite sandy. There you go, a bit of a bit of a patch. There you go, a bit of a patch there too. Alrighty guys, so great session of the calamari and also a few whiting. I didn't really get into the whiting too much. I'll save that for another trip. Some fine specimens of calamari and also a few whitings. Now I can't be more happy than that. We'll uh, definitely see you home for a cook up. Take it easy. Alright, there you have it. Nice and easy to clean. Bloody brilliant. And that's it. Squid chew. I'm leaving the skin on. I'm just making squid rings. But I'm going to cook it very different. I'm going to my sister's house. We've got a party there. And uh, yeah, I've got no oregano, so I'm using rosemary. Put it flour. <coughs> okay, so we're just going to quickly cook up these calamari rings. Not on the um, hot plate or gas plate. We're going to cook it up in a real different place. So here we go, guys. Never, never done before on YouTube. Calamari in a wood fired oven. All right. Bit more in? Yeah, that's right. That's good. Okay. You can just see the wood is starting to curl up a bit. That's quick, isn't it? Might stir them. Yep. Ooh, look at that. That was quick, isn't it? Yeah. Wood fired oven calamari rings. Mate, what else do you want? I oh, reckon almost done. Put another 10 seconds. Another 10 seconds here. Oh, look at that. Oh. <laughs> that looks brilliant. Quick taste test. Oh, it's really good. Oh. Yeah, really good. With the rosemary and the salt, wood fired oven, the charcoal drills, that's how you do calamari. Actually, oh, that's hot. I was going to take it and run around there so nobody else can share. There you go. It was too, it was too good. I was going to put it on the pizza, but that's just too good. Had to do another batch. Thanks, Chef. <laughs> anyway, if you like the show, make sure you subscribe. Fish Tucker Man rules for another day. Take it easy. See you next time. Fish Tucker. Fish Tucker. Fish Tucker Man. Fish Tucker. Fish Tucker. The Fish Tucker Man.